Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Reshma Tiwari with the Midday News. The headlines. COVID-19 vaccination drive for the age of 18 years and above begins today. Over 2.66 crore people registered on COVID portal so far. Center provides nearly 16 crore 37 lakh COVID vaccine doses to states and union territories so far. Government releases over 8,873 crore rupees for state disaster response fund to all the states for COVID-19 containment measures. Over 27,44,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. More than 2,99,000 people recovered from COVID in the last 24 hours. First batch of Russian COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V to arrive in India. At least 18 people killed in a fire accident at COVID hospital in Gujarat. Preparations in full swing for counting of votes for assembly elections in five states and union territory tomorrow. Government sets target of road construction of 15 lakh crore rupees in next two years, says Union Minister Nitin Gadkari. SBI allows customers to send their KYC details by post or email. Prime Minister Narendra Modi greets people of Gujarat and Maharashtra on their statehood day. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians to clash with Chennai Super Kings in Delhi this evening. As the number of COVID cases is on the rise, we appeal to our listeners to take all precautions and all those above 18 years of age to get vaccinated without any hesitation. The vaccination for persons aged between 18 and 44 began today at designated facilities. Stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain Doga's Kiduri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. And now, the news in detail. The liberalized and accelerated phase three of the COVID-19 vaccination drive has started today. Everyone above the age of 18 years will be administered the COVID-19 vaccine in this phase. The registration process for this phase is on and over 2.66 crore people have registered on the COVID portal so far. The appointments for people aged 18 years and above has also opened at multiple locations. In this phase, the vaccination will continue as before in the central government's vaccination centers, free of cost to the eligible people, including healthcare workers, frontline workers and all people above 45 years of age. A report. During this phase, vaccine manufacturers will supply 50% of their monthly release doses to the central government and they will be free to supply the remaining 50% doses to the states as well as in the open market. The manufacturers of Covaxin and Covishield vaccines have already declared the price of vaccines that will be available to state governments and in the open market. Private hospitals will have to procure their supplies of COVID vaccine exclusively from the 50% supply earmark for other than the Government of India channel. Central government from from its share will allocate vaccines to states and UTs based on the criteria of the extent of infection and the speed of administration. All vaccination will be the part of national vaccination program and mandated to follow all protocols such as being captured on the COVID platform. Divakar, Air News, Delhi. As a special dispensation, the center has released in advance over 8,873 crore rupees for State Disaster Response Fund, STRF, to all the states. The states can use up to 50% of the released amount for COVID-19 containment measures that include meeting the cost of oxygen generation and storage plants in hospitals, ventilators, strengthening ambulance services, COVID-19 hospitals, thermal scanners, personal protective equipment, testing laboratories and testing kits. The Finance Ministry has released the amount ahead of the normal schedule of the first installment of SDRF, which is generally released in the month of June. However, in relaxation of the normal procedure, not only the release of SDRF has been advanced, the amount has also been released without waiting for the utilization certificate. The center has so far provided nearly 16 crore, 37 lakh COVID vaccine doses to states and union territories free of cost. Of them, the total consumption, including wastage, stood at over 15 crore, 58 lakh doses. 
Union Health Ministry in a statement said that more than 79 lakh COVID vaccine doses are still available with the states and UTs to be administered. Over 17 lakh vaccine doses will be received in addition by the states within the next three days. As per the data of the Health Ministry, Maharashtra has so far received 1 crore 63 lakh doses of vaccine and the total consumption including wastage is around 1 crore 62 lakh. Uttar Pradesh was provided over 1 crore 36 lakh doses and the consumption, including wastage in the state, is nearly 1 crore 33 lakh. The world's largest COVID-19 vaccination drive is progressing smoothly in the country. The Health Ministry has informed that over 27,44,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines were administered to the beneficiaries in the last 24 hours. The Ministry said over 15 crore 49 lakh people have already been inoculated with COVID-19 vaccines in the country so far. The number of active cases of COVID-19 in India continues to rise and presently comprises nearly 17.06% of the total reported cases. In the last 24 hours, the nation registered a total of 4,1993 new COVID cases and over 2,99,000 people have recovered. So far, over 1 crore 56 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19 infection in the country. With this, the recovery rate has further slipped to stand at 81.84%. The Health Ministry has informed that over 32,68,000 people are suffering from COVID and are either hospitalized or under home isolation. According to ICMR, more than 19,45,000 samples were tested in the country in the past 24 hours. The CSIR Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB Director, Dr. Rakesh K. Mishra said, several mutants of coronavirus are fast spreading their footprints in different parts of the country. He informed our Hyderabad correspondent that though the new mutants are fast spreading infection, they are not creating the real problem during the current second wave. We should break the chain as soon as we can. So mm -hmm. all of us, and this is not something which government can do or a state can do. This is people have to do. We have to understand, and that's why I'm very keen that message goes, that we have to take the matter in our hand, which means wear the mask, don't come out without any purpose, don't be in cluster, and never remove your mask while talking outside with anybody. Mm -hmm. Don't gather in one room like a cinema hall or restaurant or one room or some panchayat or whatever. Don't cluster together, make social distance. Hand hygiene is important. Keep washing your hand frequently before you eat. Don't touch your mouth again and again. If we do these things, we can still come out with this without any further damage. Amidst the ongoing pandemic, the government provided relief to the people by permitting import of oxygen concentrators for personal use through post courier or e-commerce portals under gifts category. The permission has been given till 31st of July this year. The Directorate General of Foreign Trade has issued a notification in this regard. The railway has waived off charges for COVID-19 testing and diet supplied during COVID-related hospitalization for non-railways patients. Railway Ministry said the government is following an approach where all ministries and departments are working as one to prevent and fight the spread of COVID-19 infection. The ministry said the railways have been at the forefront of fighting the COVID and waiving off key medical charges is a step towards making the healthcare accessible for all. The centre has waived off the import duty on vital diagnostic kits and reagents used in COVID-19 related diagnosis for the next six months. The decision has been taken to supplement testing efforts. The exemption has been given till the 31st of October this year. The Civil Aviation Ministry has given permission to Telangana government to use drones for experimental delivery of COVID-19 vaccines. The permission exemption is valid for a period of one year or until further orders. Earlier this month, similar permission was granted to the Indian Council of Medical Research for conducting feasibility study of COVID-19 vaccine delivery using drones in collaboration with IIT Kanpur. The grant of these permissions is intended to achieve the dual objectives of faster vaccine delivery and improved healthcare access by ensuring primary healthcare delivery at the citizen's doorstep. In Gujarat, at least 18 persons, including 16 COVID patients, died after a fire broke out at a hospital in Bharuj early this morning. There were about 50 patients at the four-storied Patel Welfare Hospital when the fire broke out in the COVID-19 ward. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani have expressed condolences over the incident. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said he is pained by the loss of lives. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. According to the eyewitnesses, about 16 COVID patients in ICU ward died on the spot. Two nurses of the hospital were also killed in this incident. According to the sources, the short circuit or oxygen leakage are believed to be the cause of the fire incident. However, Chief Minister Vijay Rupani has sent two senior IS officers to the spot for further investigation. He also indicates judicial inquiry into this incident. Fire was controlled within hours. Patients rescued from the incident have been admitted in nearby hospitals. Gujarat government has announced Rs 4 lakh case compensation to the keen of each deceased in this fire incident from the Chief Minister's Relief Fund. Yogesh Pandya, AIR News, Ahmedabad. The Bihar government has cancelled the leaves of all health officials till May the 31st in view of the spike in COVID cases in the state. Governor Thagu Chauhan ordered summer vacations of all universities till 31st of May. Earlier, summer vacation was scheduled from June the 1st to the 30th. Secretariat of Bihar Assembly has been closed till May the 15th amid increasing number of COVID cases in the state. Meanwhile, fresh corona cases continue to rise rapidly. A record number of 15,853 fresh cases were reported in the state yesterday. This is the highest number of cases reported on a single day. 152 deaths were also reported. Madhya Pradesh government transferred Rs 61 crore into the accounts of more than 6,10,000 street vendors of the state through direct benefit transfer. Meanwhile, it reported 12,400 new cases today, while 13,584 patients have recovered. The state's recovery rate has been 83%. A report. Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan said that the government is fully committed to remove the difficulties faced by the poor due to COVID pandemic. Mr. Chauhan said that the state is now getting adequate amount of oxygen. Meanwhile, the rate of corona infection is continuously decreasing. The state stands at 14th place in the country in terms of corona infection. The number of active cases of corona in the state has come down to 90,796. The average positivity rate of the state has declined to 21.1%. Pooja Pivardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. Karnataka reported 48,296 new COVID cases and 217 deaths due to the pandemic yesterday. With the positivity rate peaking at 25.44%, the state has remained under lockdown since April 27th. In a bid to contain the spread of the pandemic, schools, colleges, hotels, cinemas, shopping malls, swimming pools, metro rail, taxi and bus services are closed and suspended till 12th of May. More from our Bengaluru correspondent. The COVID-appropriate behavior is advised by the health department. The state health minister, Dr. K. Sudhakar, has directed the hospitals to judiciously use oxygen and remdesivir in the hospitals. During the hospitals in Kalburgi today, he directed district deputy commissioner to appoint a supervisor to monitor the availability of essentials to combat the coronavirus. He noted with dismay that remdesivir injections are being black marketed in the state. He also instructed the district administration to take a vaccination at a faster pace to cope up with the increasing case of COVID in the state, Chief Minister B.S. Europa has tweeted that 4,000 ICU beds will be set up in Bengaluru on a war footing. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. AIMS Director Randeep Guleria has stressed that misuse of drugs must be avoided to effectively deal with the cases of COVID-19. In a media briefing in New Delhi yesterday, Dr. Guleria suggested measures for the treatment of patients with mild asymptomatic disease in home isolation. He said if the fever is not controlled with a maximum dosage of paracetamol four times a day, then it is advised to consult a physician. अगर आप पर बुखार जो है वो पैरासिटामॉल जो हम कहते हैं कि आप 650 मिलीग्राम दिन में चार दफा ले सकते हैं उससे कम नहीं हो रहा है तो अपने डॉक्टर से संपर्क करें और आप दूसरी कोई दवाई जिससे बुखार कम हो सकता है जिनको हम कहते हैं नॉन स्टेरॉइड एंटी इन्फ्लेमेटरी ड्रग जैसे नेप्रोक्सोन है या इब्यूजेसिक है उस टाइप की दवाई भी ले सकते हो जिससे आपका बुखार कम हो जाए क्योंकि कई मरीज ऐसे हैं तो ये कहते हैं कि पैरासिटामॉल से उनका बुखार नीचे नहीं आ रहा अभी भी 101 102 पे है तो तब अपने डॉक्टर से संपर्क करके दवाई थोड़ी चेंज कर सकते हैं हम ये भी एडवाइस करते हैं कि आइवरमेक्टिन जो एक दवाई है वो रोज एक गोली ले सकते हैं तीन से पांच दिन के लिए इस दवाई की रिकमेंडेशन बेस्ड ऑन डिस्कशन जो नेशनल टास्क फोर्स और जॉइंट मॉनिटरिंग ग्रुप की मीटिंग में हुआ था जिन्होंने सारा डेटा एवेल्यूएट करके ये पाया था कि शायद इस दवाई से थोड़ा बहुत फायदा हो सकता है और इसलिए ये होम आइसोलेशन की गाइडलाइंस में डाली गई है 
You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. COVID-19 vaccination drive for the age of 18 years and above begins today. Over 2.66 crore people registered on COVID portal so far. Centre provides nearly 16 crore 37 lakh COVID vaccine doses to states and union territories so far. Government releases over 8,873 crore rupees for state disaster response fund to all the states for COVID-19 containment measures. Over 15 crore 49 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. More than 2 lakh 99 thousand people recovered from COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. First batch of Russian COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V to arrive in India. At least 18 people killed in a fire accident at COVID hospital in Gujarat. Preparations in full swing for counting of votes for assembly elections in five states and union territory tomorrow. Government sets target of road construction of 15 lakh crore rupees in next two years, says Union Minister Nitin Gadkari. SBI allows customers to send their KYC details by post or email. Prime Minister Narendra Modi greets people of Gujarat and Maharashtra on their statehood day and in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians to clash with Chennai Super Kings in Delhi this evening. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. The first batch of the Russian COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V is scheduled to arrive in India today. The Russian vaccine's arrival is expected to boost India's efforts in ramping up its capacity to vaccinate more people. Meanwhile, 15 oxygen concentrators from Thailand arrived in Delhi today as assistance to India in the fight against COVID-19. India has welcomed the gift of oxygen concentrators from its ASEAN partner. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bagchi also thanked the Indian community in Thailand who have generously donated another 15 oxygen concentrators. Sources said Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha conveyed through Foreign Affairs Ministry his desire to offer assistance to India. India indicated oxygen-related requirement of cylinders, concentrators, generators and cryogenic oxygen tanks. Meanwhile, Indian corporates in coordination with the Indian Embassy in Thailand and the Home Ministry were sourcing cryogenic tanks from Thailand. Eleven tanks in three sorties by IAFC-17 have already reached India. In addition, 100 oxygen cylinders have separately been offered by the Indian Association of Thailand. Steps are being taken for their speedy transportation to India. In the states of Assam, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and the Union Territory of Puducherry, all necessary preparations are being finalized for the counting of votes in respect of general elections to the Legislative Assemblies tomorrow. In addition, the counting of votes for the simultaneous bypolls to four Lok Sabha seats and 12 Assembly seats in different states will also be taken up together. The counting process will begin at 8 a.m. In view of second wave of pandemic and with a view to ensure completely COVID-safe arrangements during counting, the Election Commission has rolled out strict COVID protocols for the counting day. The District Election Officer has been appointed as a nodal officer at each counting centre to ensure adherence to the COVID-19-related norms at the centre. Local health authorities have also been mandated to issue compliance certificate in respect of the counting centres. In Tamil Nadu, counting for all the 234 assembly constituencies and one Lok Sabha by-election constituency of Kanyakumari will be conducted in 75 centres all over the state. The Health Department and the Election Department have asked the poll-related personnel and officials to provide the COVID-negative certificate. A report. 
As the counting of votes is set to begin tomorrow and covid situation in the state also in an upward trend more than 300 people involved in counting have tested positive for the pandemic in Tirunelveli Coimbatore and Vidyanagar districts the government has institutionalized a covid-19 unified command center at the office of national health mission in coordination with all the other departments and directorates for managing bed availability especially for critically ill patients the health and family welfare department has started with 104 go tn in twitter as a helpline for those who need beds the state registered more than 18000 cases yesterday with over 1 lakh persons being treated for the pandemic more than 2 lakh samples have been tested and deaths counted to more than 100 joy air news chennai in kerala all arrangements are in place for a smooth and hassle free counting of votes for the assembly polls tomorrow in the wake of the unprecedented covid spread the counting will take place under strict covid guidelines a report Postal votes will be counted from 8 in the morning tomorrow and the votes in the EVMs will be counted from 8:30 a.m. onwards. Chief Electoral Officer Tikara Meena said that 633 halls have been set up in 114 centers for the counting of votes. In the present alarming COVID scenario, the number of vote counting halls have been raised from 140 to 633. A total of 24,709 officials including reserve force have been deployed for the poll counting purpose. Strict security has been put in place in the state tomorrow. State Police Chief Lokdant Mehra informed that 30,000 281 policemen including 3332 central armed police personnel will be on duty Mayusha for AR news from Tiruvannadapuram In the Union Territory of Puducherry the counting of votes will be held tomorrow The single phase election for the 30 member legislative assembly was held on the 6th of April a report Arrangements have been made strictly according to the covid protocols The counting of votes for 23 constituencies in Puducherry region will be held in three centers here that is in Women's Polytechnic College Modilal Nehru Polytechnic College and Tagur Arts and Science College all three in Laspet in Karikal region the counting of votes of five constituencies will be held at the PG center at Arringer Anna Government Arts and Science College Mahe constituency votes will be counted at Jawaharlal Nehru Government Higher Secondary School and the Yanam constituency votes will be counted at Conference Hall Mini Civil Station Chandramohan ER News Puducherry Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari has said that the government has set a target of road construction of worth 15 lakh crore rupees in next 2 years he said government is giving utmost priority to the development of infrastructure Addressing the Indo-US Partnership Vision Summit through video conferencing yesterday, Mr. Gadkari exuded confidence that the ministry will achieve the target of 40 kilometers per day of highways construction in current fiscal. He said that the government is permitting 100% FDI in the road sector. The minister added that in India, projects like National Infrastructure Pipeline for 2019 to 2025 is the first of its kind and government is committed to provide world-class infra to its citizens and improving quality of their lives. He said that under the NIP, there are over 7,300 projects to be implemented at a total outlay of 111 lakh crore rupees by 2025. With a view to provide relief to its customers amidst corona pandemic, the State Bank of India SBI has said that customers can send know your customer KYC details for updation by post or email as physical visit to bank branches is not compulsory for updating details. In a tweet, the SBI said that in view of the resurgence of COVID-19 cases along with various lockdown in place in many states, it has been decided that KYC updation shall be carried out on the basis of documents received through post or registered email it also said that partial freezing of customer identification files cif due for kyc updation will not be done till 31st of may 2021 prime minister narendra modi has conveyed his greetings on the statehood day of gujarat and maharashtra in a tweet the prime minister said both the states are home to outstanding people who have made landmark contributions to national growth He hoped that these states fight COVID-19 successfully and people of these states are blessed with good health. 61st Foundation Day of Maharashtra is being celebrated in a low key across the state for the second consecutive year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thackeray today paid floral tributes at Hutatma Smarak in Mumbai, the memorial of 105 martyrs who sacrificed their lives during the Samyukt Maharashtra movement. Today is International Labor Day. The day is celebrated to honor the contribution of workers across the world. It is also known as May Day. 
The day aims at paying tribute to workers' sacrifices in achieving economic and social rights all over the world. On the occasion, Director General of International Labour Organization, Guy Ryder, has called on workers, employers, governments, international organizations, and all who are committed to building back better to join forces to bring in a world of work with justice and dignity for all. The nation is commemorating the 400th Prakash Parb of Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, the ninth Sikh Guru today. Considered a principal and fearless warrior, he was a spiritual scholar and poet whose 115 hymns are included in Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. On the special occasion, Prime Minister Narendra Modi in a tweet said that he bows to Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji, who is widely respected globally for his courage and efforts to serve the downtrodden. The Prime Minister also visited Gurudwara Siskan Sahib in Delhi this morning and offered prayers. In IPL, a resurgent Mumbai Indians will take on Chennai Super Kings at Delhi's Arun Jaitley Stadium tonight. Rohit Sharma-led Mumbai have had a difficult start to their title defence. However, Mumbai showed signs of recovery in their last game. On the other hand, Mahendra Singh Dhoni-led Chennai side has won five out of its six matches and looks a very strong unit. Yesterday, Punjab Kings defeated Royal Challengers Bangalore by 34 runs at Ahmedabad. COVID-19 does affect the physical body, but the constant hearing of news about COVID affects the minds as well. In the fight against COVID-19, mind plays a major role, so it is imperative to keep the mind positive. The poem by Chandrasekhar Goswami from Varanasi calls upon all of us to keep up a spirited fight to ward off the coronavirus. संकट से जूझ रहा है अपना भारत प्यारा महामारी से लड़कर जीतेगा देश हमारा कोविड 19 संकल्प से ही जाएगा हमारा महामारी से लड़कर जीतेगा देश हमारा है नमन राष्ट्र रक्षकों को नर्स और डॉक्टर को दैनिक उपभोग की वस्तुओं के सप्लायर को खतरे में है खुद फिर भी ये सेवा में लगे हैं बस मानवता की रक्षा में दिन रात जगे हैं इनका अभिनंदन करना है कर सभ्य हमारा महामारी से लड़कर जीतेगा देश हमारा अपने अपने मोर्चों पर सबको लड़ना है करके परास्त संकट को आगे बढ़ना है सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग से कोरोना हारेगा संयम संकल्प हमारा इसको मारेगा स्वच्छता और निज स्वास्थ्य बिना ना कोई चारा महामारी से लड़कर जीतेगा देश हमारा now let us take a look at the weather forecast. National capital Delhi will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Mumbai will also have generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Chennai is also going to have partly cloudy sky. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder lightning. Jammu will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Srinagar will have generally cloudy sky. Leh will have partly cloudy sky with temperatures ranging between 2 and 17 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will also have mainly clear sky. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. And Chandigarh will have generally cloudy sky today. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. COVID-19 vaccination drive for the age of 18 years and above begins today. Over 2.66 crore people registered on COVID portal so far. Centre provides nearly 16 crore 37 lakh COVID vaccine doses to states and union territories so far. Government releases over 8,873 crore rupees for State Disaster Response Fund to all the states for COVID-19 containment measures. Over 15 crore 49 lakh doses of COVID-19 vaccine administered in the country so far. More than 2 lakh 99,000 people recovered from COVID in the last 24 hours. First batch of Russian COVID-19 vaccine Sputnik V to arrive in India. At least 18 people killed in a fire accident at COVID hospital in Gujarat. Preparations in full swing for counting of votes for assembly elections in four states and union territory tomorrow. Government sets target of road construction of 15 lakh crore rupees in next two years, says Union Minister Nitin Gadkari. 
ایس بی آئی الاؤز کسٹمرز ٹو سینڈ دیئر کے وائی سی ڈیٹیلز بائی پوسٹ اور ای میل پرائم منسٹر نریندر مودی گریٹس پیپل آف گجرات اینڈ مہاراشٹرا آن دیئر اسٹیٹ ہڈ ڈے اینڈ ان آئی پی ایل کرکٹ ممبئی انڈینس ٹو کلیش ود چینئی سپر کنگز ان ڈیلی دس ایوننگ اینڈ ود دیٹ وی اینڈ دا مڈ ڈے نیوز